What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here and today a 2700 faces the C3 Cecile for the kill. Now he's an international master. Let's get right into it. Let me just show y'all what I'm talking about here. So as you see up here, he's 2714. Now before I won the game, he was like 27, maybe 20, maybe 30, something like that. But he dropped some points, of course, after he lost his game. So here we go, guys. C3 Cecile for the kill. Okay, so here we go. E4, C5, C3 as usual. Knight f6 and then e5. So this is the usual stuff. By the way, there's a course right under this video. You guys can grab the course and uh, yeah, go from there. So it's still a uh, half off. So knight to d5 on the board. Knight f3, knight to c6, d4. This is all stuff covered in the course. This is all basic information you can find. After c takes, c takes, then you have d6 on the board. d6 is a good move. And then we have knight to c3. So knight to c3, you can take here or you can take on c3. Both lines I'm very familiar with. I actually cover them in the course as well. Evgeny Sveshnikov helped me a lot um, when it comes to looking at both of these lines, actually. And the engine helped as well. So after knight takes c3, this is my favorite line, actually. And after pawn takes, I'm expecting him to take here. And this goes into some nasty tactic lines. I'll actually show you what a lot of titled players actually have ran into after takes d5 knight a5 seems like a regular move just trying not to go backwards knight b8 to move too as well and then i hit him with bishop b5 and we live okay game's already over right here big fella so after bishop d7 queen a4 now i'm threatening to take on d7 and take on a5 because it's overloaded overloaded's not good you don't want an overloaded piece so he has to play b6 to defend everything so now if bishop takes and there's queen takes but I actually have knight takes e5, and we live. The game's over right here. Absolutely over. I'm hitting this bishop too many times. After captures, captures, there's mate. So many title players have actually fell into that line. But he didn't go for this. He actually played a more conservative line, which is just e6, expecting me to capture. And after captures, bishop takes. And he develops, you know, not with tempo, but he just develops for free, kind of. And he's able to castle, which I'm not a big fan of this. Now, a problem in the c3 Sicilian for black Usually C3 Cecile for the kill is this bishop. If you play this line, I have a very great win record. And, and if you're a C3 Sicilian player, look at all of the videos, of course, in this playlist. But if you are a C3 Sicilian player, guys, um, this is some of the ones that you love to see. If the bishops are crossed like this, keep them as much like this as possible. Try to keep them closed like this as possible. So I'll play bishop to D3. So I'll let him break up my pawns like this, which he does. So now I have pawn weaknesses, which means we probably shouldn't go into an endgame. But for C3 Cecile for the kill... We don't get to an in-game. Sometimes we do. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes we do. But D takes E5, H6, castles, Bishop C5. So he's just trying to castle quickly. I play Queen E2 because I'm just going to go Queen E4 if he castles. And what does he do? He just castles. And literally, I was like, yo, what are you doing? And here I thought I was like, you know, are you setting a trap or something? But no, this man found the tallest building he can find and jumped off of it right here. As at Castles is not a move. That's not a move, right? Castles is just not a move, big fella. So I hit him with queen e4. Now I'm already going to win a pawn. If g6, bishop takes h6, and the rest is like history. I mean, we're we trying to swing in here, you know, as quickly as possible and bring the party with us. Maybe even rook lifting too, so. <clears throat> but he played, uh, he played f5, which is understandable. He actually calculated this pretty well. I hit him with the check because I'm like, if I don't, he's not going to allow me to ever get it. So why not do it? But there's no mate. King f7. Imagine having positions like this, guys, where there's no mate. And actually, the best move here by the engine says bishop to e3. I didn't play that because I'm like, well, how do I make this work? Like, you feel like you're winning, but it's not there yet. Bishop g6 just not a move yet. And then his plan is to play here and rook h8. So if I'm not careful, I, I trap my queen in here. Then I was trying to get knight g5 in, but this pawn is doing a great job. So what did I play? I played h4. So eventually, I'm either going to play h5 and try to get the piece here. Or maybe even playing knight g5. And for instance, guys, you know, knight g5, uh, I was going for something like this. Uh, where now the queen's almost trapped. And then after here, you have bishop g6 mate. Nasty. That's the something I was thinking of. But he did. we didn't go for that. He actually played uh, bishop d7. I knew this was coming at this point now. So I'm like, ah, this is annoying. I can't do anything. So I played h5. I played h5. If he would have went rook h8, I just would have backed up, honestly. He didn't go rook h8. And I want to know what happens. Let's see. Rook h8. Uh, yeah, you just back up. Yeah, I was going to back up anyway. But so um, let's see what he played, though. After Bishop D7, I went H5. He went 97. So he's just completely stopping anything dropping into G6. He's going to eliminate it. So at this point, I have no reason to be here any longer. So I just jumped out of there. Like, look, I'm coming back to the wilderness. I'm fine. Bishop C6. And then uh, after this, I saw both of these bishops pointing here. 
So there's no way to do anything else but to get rid of this bishop. Like, don't even think about it. 95 check. King g8 is not a move, guys, because that's mate, and we great. Very nice. So king e8 was the move he chose, and then knight takes and takes. And then here I knew f2 was hanging, and there was a wild line here, and I knew I was going to get some compensation if I let him take it. So I played rook to b1. Rook to b1, guys. Now, why doesn't bishop takes f2 be is the best here, right? You have to actually really do some calculations here, and he did not take on f2. Now, most people would take on f2, so let's see what happens. Bishop takes f2, king h1. Now this is a pin here. And you have to figure out what to do. I'm still threatening taking on b7. So queen h4 is logical because you're trying to trade and eliminate my pieces. So takes, takes. But then I have this move that's hard to see, which is bishop g6 check. And if king d8, of course, then, you know, gg, start a new game. This is a family channel. Let's get this off the screen. So you can't do that. But king e7, then I hit him with bishop a3. Oh, my goodness, right? And then if king d7, then rook takes b7. So this was just gross all around. It was all bad everywhere. So he actually couldn't take on f2, or he just didn't want to, of course, but he saw this. He plays rook f7. Now after rook f7, I'm not going to let him do it twice, and also this is not check anymore. It is a pin, but I hit him with bishop e3. So if he captures, I'm going to open a file here. Now, of course, captures, I did not expect him to capture at all, but sometimes when you are in weird positions, and like it's not good for you, you just make moves. And I think that's what happened here. I'm not sure what his thought process was. I mean, maybe just, honestly, it's still bad, but maybe like bishop e7 or something like this. Then I have to figure out what to do. Oh, I could take on b7, so I can't do that. So maybe bishop here, but dang, I could still take on e7. Oh, yikes. Rook takes b7, taking here. Woof. So maybe maybe he was looking at that. <laughs> maybe I didn't see how much of a Jedi that this saber uh, was doing uh, to him, if you understand me. So bishop e3, bishop takes c3, f takes c3. He, he, he played queen e5, right? Queen e5, so he's trying to trade him off. I hit him with queen g6. I honestly didn't know if there was anything um, better here. I think he had knight d8, which is uh, weird. King h1, he played knight e5, but I think he could have played knight d8. Let's see. Okay, knight d8 is still, it's even worse. So what's happening on knight d8? You just take on, dang, rook takes b7 anyway and have a nice day. Oh my goodness. That's nasty. Rook takes b7. My guy. Well, here it is. Okay, queen g6 takes... He went here at 95. Then I hit him with this move right here. Bam! Takes on e6 one time. Oh, that's a check. Flex real hard. If rook e7, we still have stuff like check here. So he went king f8. Then I hit him again. Bam! Rook takes f7 check. Oh my goodness, that hurts. If knight takes, queen takes e3. And then king g8 and hit him one more time. You know what I mean? Bam! There it is. Rook f3 check. Game's over. And he resigns right here in this position because the queen is gone, big fella. Start a new game. So this was a c3 Cecil for the kill, guys. A 2700. Goes down. He was 2,700, guys. It's right here. 2,700. He goes down to the C3 Cecil for the kill. Now, honestly, I've seen better games from 2,700s, of course. Like, I mean, you know, even a little bit lower rated. So, of course, there were some inaccuracies here. But still, at the same time, this is a very tricky opening, guys. Even strong players have problems with the C3 Cecil for the kill. Get the course right under the video. What are you waiting for? Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Like, sh subscribe, share, do all that other good stuff. Put comments under the video, guys. And uh, look at the playlist for the C3 Cecil for the kill. Um, check the links under the description, guys. And I'll see you on the next video.